Okay, yeah, so we're gonna do three depreciation methods. We're gonna do straight line. We're gonna do um, units of production. And we're gonna do double declining balance. Okay. So those are the three depreciation methods you're going to walk away with once we get through this chapter. And you already had some exposure to straight line in earlier chapters. If you remember the formula was the cost minus the salvage value. And you take all of that and you divide it by the estimated useful life of the asset. Okay. So this word salvage value is also an estimate because when you buy the asset, you don't really know what you can get for it once you're done using it, right? What you can sell it for, for scrap or sell it off to someone else. Right, and the word salvage value. Let's add some rows so we got more space. Sometimes it's called so the salvage value and residual value. Residual value are the same thing. Okay, so if you ever see the word residual value, that that's the same as salvage value. Okay. All right, so make an example. Um, let's say, say ABC company purchased bought a backhoe. I don't know what a backhoe costs. Let's say about 150,000. Oh. Yeah. You know backhoe? Yeah, that works. You think that's pretty close? Yeah. Yeah. You have some experience. My boyfriend's uncle has a um, his own company. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. Good guess, huh? <laughs> On um, let, let's make it September 1st, 2017. Uh, ABC intends to use the backhoe for 10 years and anticipates being able to sell it for Twenty-five thousand after ten years pass. Record depreciation expense for two thousand seventeen and two thousand and eighteen. Assuming ABC uses straight line. Okay. So I crafted you a real quick problem. Okay. And although a lot of that terminology that's in our formula isn't sitting in here, you've got to be able to identify what each number is, right? So First of all, what is the cost? The cost is 150,000, right? What would the salvage or residual value be? 25,000, okay? So that now you kind of get the definition of what that is. That's what they're gonna get for this backhoe when they're done using it, when the estimated life mm -hmm. is over. And the estimated life for ABC is 10 years. The, the whole backhoe may still be 
useful at the end of the life, right? But it might not be useful a for ABC after 10 years, okay? So they're, they're just planning to use it for 10 years in this example. So what we do is we basically run the formula. We gotta figure out 2017 and 2018, okay? So the first thing I would do is I would set my formula up 150,000 minus 25,000 and I'm going to divide by the estimated life of 10 years. And that's going to give me the annual depreciation. And be careful, this will be for a full year. Okay. So if we do that, we get that number. So we'll basically... And you can do it in Excel. You can take 150,000 minus 25,000, which is going to be 125,000 divided by 10 years, and that'll give you 12,500 per year. But for a full year, right? Okay. So for 2017, there's kind of a, a little bit of a quirk in this problem, right? We didn't own the asset for a full year. We own the asset or own the backhoe from 9 1 to 12 31. When assuming we're on an annual annual year basis, right? Okay, so that's and you can use your fingers if you have to, right? September, October, November, December, that's four months, right? So for 2017, I'm going to take that fraction of a year, 4 out of 12 months, and multiply it by the annual depreciation of 12,500, which we figured out earlier. Okay. And what does that give me? 12,500. That's a third, right? Times, if you want to do it out longhand in Excel, you can always use basic math structure, right? Put your stuff in parentheses. So that's 4,166.667. Um, we'll just round it, right? And then the journal entry, so 2017's journal entry. You guys should know this by now. What do I debit? I'm recording. The, the whole point of the problem is to get the depreciation amount, but then... Depreciation expense. Yep, depreciation expense. So I'm going to debit depreciation expense, and I'm going to credit. You guys remember? Yeah, accumulated. What kind of account is accumulated depreciation? Starts with a C. This is a contra, contra, asset. contra asset. Yes, right. So it it's actually increasing, right? We're increasing the accumulated depreciation in this journal entry, but notice it's increasing with a credit. Assets normally increase with debits, so a contra asset behaves in the opposite manner of a of an asset. Okay, so it's going to offset the cost of your asset when you present that on the balance sheet. Okay, how about 2018? How do I record depreciation expense? Because notice the problem asks us to do it for 2017 and 2018. So on December 31st, 2018, I would basically do the same thing, right? Debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation, and I can inch this up. We don't need to look at the problem, right? But I'll put in a full year's amount, right? I, Because it's a full year, right? We've owned that asset for that entire year. Does that make sense? Okay. So be aware that if you buy an asset somewhere 
in the middle of the year somewhere, right? You're not going to take the full year's depreciation on that asset, right? Okay. So that's straight line depreciation. The reason they call it straight line is if you graphed it for all the full years, right? It would end up being 12,500 per year. So if you had it on a graph, you know, when you graph it, the line would be straight like that. Straight. Okay. Okay. Now, units of production. Any questions on straight line? Let's put units of production in here. Okay. Units of production is a little different than straight line because we're going to, instead of depreciating the asset over its estimated life in time, like in years, right? We're going to be depreciating the asset um, using an estimate of how many units it can generate. Okay. So. I don't know about a backhoe. That might be kind of hard as an example. And then, you know Genki Sushi? Have you been there? Has anybody not been to Genki Sushi? Has anyone worked at Genki Sushi? No. Nobody. Okay. So I, if I make a mistake here, then you, you're not going to know. Don't, uh, don't eat the, the scallop. The ginger. Oh. Ask for the classic ginger. Oh. Well, people double dip. <laughs> Double dip into the ginger. Yes. Okay. Okay. Anyway, there's this little machine in the middle at Genki Sushi, right? It's it's a little different than like a regular sushi bar where they just kind of make the rice by hand, right? The nigiri, right? They got this machine that that's rotating. From what I can see from where I'm sitting, right? I I don't really know exactly, but. It looks like it's rotating and spinning out the rice in these exact sizes, right? So, right, that machine, in theory, over the life of that machine, it can generate probably so many of these rice balls. Right? They're not balls, they're kind of elongated, but, right? And then it's going to bomb out, okay? So that might be something that we could depreciate using units of production, okay? Just keep that in the back of your head, and we'll make an example out of that. Could it be something that is recorded by hours, too? Like you could do hours. You use it, like, yep. how many hours before? You could use machine hours, too, as units of production. For a truck, you could use miles, right? So any kind of unit that something's pr producing, right? Um, I like the Genki thing because I can get the image in my mind, right? So... But yeah, a truck you could do on miles. You could do hours of production. Um, kind of getting down to units, right? So the formula for this units of production depreciation would be, this one would be similar to your, your straight line here, right? Where we have costs minus salvage value. But instead of salvage value, we're going to divide by estimated useful life in units okay and that when we do that that will give us our depreciation per unit or per unit produced okay so there's a second step right for each year right you have to multiply the depreciation per unit by the actual units produced in that year. Okay? So you gotta take this number that you get out of your initial calculation and multiply it by the number of units produced each year. Okay, So it has a, a, an actual aspect to it. So like take a truck for example. Say you figure out that you're going to depreciate at 35 cents per mile. 
So at the end of the year, you look at your odometer, figure out how many miles that truck went over the year and multiply those miles by the depreciation per mile that you initially figured out. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if I can use the word Genki Sushi, so we'll make up something. Okay. Let's see. Seaside Sushi. Right? Purchased a rice ball machine for $17,000. On, make it easy, 1 1 2016. The company estimates that the machine will be able to generate. That's a lot. Let's say five hundred thousand. Oops. Rice balls over its Seaside So we're going to compute depreciation expense for 2016 and 2017, assuming that 25,000 rice balls were generated. in 2016 and 50,000 rice balls were generated in 2017. The company uses the units of production Okay, so we basically come in here, we memorized our formula. I'll make a little more room. Okay. And the first thing we do, step one, is to figure out the depreciation per estimated unit. All right, so we're going to take the cost of 17000 subtract the salvage value, our residual value, of 1,000, and we're going to divide by the estimated useful life in units. Okay, And I'm calling them rice balls, but they're actually, actually they're more squared off than like if somebody made it by hand, yeah. And it's got a lot more rice, If by the way, if you, I haven't gone there since the, um, sal was it salmonella or? Hepatitis, yeah. Yeah. I haven't been there, but I used to frequent the place. I like it a little less rice, though, you know, and bigger fish. But it was a good quick stop if you needed to have some sushi. You know. yeah. 
Okay, so we're gonna divide it. I'm calling it rice balls. 500 over the life, right? So this is gonna give us our depreciation per unit, okay? And in this case, I'll just solve it right here, right? So that's gonna be 16,000 divided by 500,000. So it's like, you know, 3.2 cents for rice. I'm gonna leave it at that. Okay, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna round that. I'm gonna use 3.2 cents for rice ball. Your problems may ask you to round it. Okay. So, how do we figure out depreciation expense? Well, we can go ahead and do it for 2016 and 2017. And it's basically, right? If you were to make a table, you could make a table. You could say. Depreciation per unit, that's going to be the same. And you're going to multiply that by actual units produced. Okay. So for 2016, we said it, we did 25,000. Now for 2017, we did 50,000. Okay, so once you do that, you multiply it. That's going to give you your depreciation expense. Okay, so over here we can say depreciation expense. Okay, and you just do the math. 3.2 cents times 25,000. And 3.2 cents times 50,000. Okay. Now, how do we record it? Same way. Same journal entry, but different numbers, right? Okay. This was just how we compute it. Okay. We're going to use the same. We, in fact, we can kind of steal it like this. We're going to have to change the dates, but. We can take that shell of an entry, put it here, and we can say for 2016, I'll change the date. For 2016, it's 800, and for 2017, it's 16. So if we were to graph this type of depreciation, you probably have more of a jagged line because you don't. It's just dependent upon how much you use that equipment. Okay, it could trend upwards, it could trend downwards, it could go up and down. You know, you know what I mean. Depending on the volume, and a lot of that would be driven by the economy and the demand for your product, or the demand for the use of that equipment. <coughs> that type of thing. Questions on that one? No? Pretty straightforward, yeah. Okay. Now we're going to do double declining balance. So double declining balance is a form of a accelerated method of depreciation. Okay. And in order to be able to do double declining balance, you got to have a little bit more terminology in your head, okay? So let's take some terminology, terms that you need to know. One is book value. Okay. Book value always equals the cost of the asset minus the accumulated depreciation. Okay. Then you need to know straight line rate. So you're talking about the straight line rate in terms of a fraction, okay? So that's gonna be one divided by the estimated 
useful life. That's the straight line rate. Okay. So go back to our prior example from number one, right? Okay. Remember the first one here? We did straight line depreciation. What would my straight line rate be? Straight line rate would be just looking at the problem. The, the rate would be 1 divided by 10. Because it's got a 10 year estimated useful life, right? So it would be 1 tenth per year. In fact, we're going to use this same information here to do our double declining. So I might as well bring this down. And when we get to it, we'll use this, okay? We'll put that there for now, okay? So straight line rate is 1 divided by the estimated useful life, okay? So what would the double declining rate be? The double declining rate would be twice the straight line rate. So no matter what, right, your double declining rate is twice the straight line rate. So in our example, our double declining rate would be two tenths, which is one fifth. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So in order to know the double declining rate here, you gotta kind of in your head at least have an idea of what the straight line rate is. Then you can come up with the double declining rate. Slow me down if I'm going too fast. So you got book value, which is always the cost minus the accumulated depreciation. You got the straight line rate, which is one divided by the estimated useful life. Or if you want to do it in decimal format, it would be whatever that comes out to be in decimal format or in percentage format. Okay. And then the double declining rate will be sh twice the straight line rate. Okay. So for double declining, the way we compute each year's Depreciation expense will be your, and let's see, annual depreciation expense is computed as the beginning book value times the double declining rate. Okay, so you'll notice that. I don't have this whole thing about cost minus salvage value. It's always my beginning book value times the double declining rate. So the formula is a little different. But what's going to change? Every year or every period in which you compute depreciation, that beginning book value is going to be different because what's increasing? Remember, if you go back to your def definition of book value, what increases every year? Exactly, Tehani. The accumulated depreciation increases every year. So that's going to drive your beginning book value down because the cost remains constant. The cost is what you paid for the asset. It's a historical figure. right? In fact, to stress it, a lot of times we refer to it as historical cost. Okay, To stress the fact that that thing is locked in. That's the historical cost. I mean... Your cost could modify down the road if you make major additions and that type of stuff. But, you know, the simple basic ideal here is that cost remains constant. Accumulated depreciation is increasing. So every year, the beginning book value will be lower. Okay? And then I'll make one more note. Do not depreciate the asset beyond beyond its salvage value. Okay. So if you get down to a year, if you get in the later years and you get to a point where if you take the full double declining balance depreciation, 
and that will raise the accumulated depreciation high enough to bring the asset down below its its salvage value, then you gotta stop. You cut off with the amount that brings it exactly to its salvage value. Okay. You got the terms memorized. Right? So all we have to do now is maybe we'll do it on the side this time. Can we fit it in right here? I think so. Then you can have the terms. You can be looking at the terms at the same time. So we'll take our same problem we got here. But this time we're going to ask. See if we can fit that in. A little bit smaller. Too small? Still see it? Good. That's good? Okay. So I'll do it right there and then we'll take this out of the way. Okay. Instead of straight line, we're going to say double declining balance. Assuming ABC uses the double declining balance method for depreciation. Okay, so ABC company purchased a backhoe for $150,000 on 9-1-2017. ABC intends to use the backhoe for 10 years and anticipates being able to sell it for $25,000 after 10 years pass. Okay, so we're going to record the depreciation expense for 2017 and 2018 assuming ABC uses the double declining balance method for depreciation. Okay, so normally the, the way we do this is we set up a table and we'll go year, we'll go uh, double declining rate. Okay, I'm gonna have to widen this a little. Just fine. Okay. Actually, you know what I would do? I would go beginning book value. Okay. We'll go double declining rate. We'll go depreciation expense. We'll go um, accumulated. Appreciation, and we'll go ending book value. Okay. So we got some columns, and then we can drop some numbers in there. And this one doesn't need to be that wide. Okay. So we got 2017. We got 2018. I'm gonna do a few more years. Okay, just so we can see how this thing pans out. So. The beginning book value, right, since there's no accumulated depreciation, right, remember book value is cost minus accumulated depreciation. Since there's no accumulated depreciation, it is the cost. Notice it's not that cost minus salvage value uh, thing that we did in the prior two methods. It starts off 150000 now think about it, what is the double declining rate? It's twice the straight line rate, okay? So in our case, the straight line rate, and I'll put this over here, is one-tenth per year. Twice the straight line rate would be two-tenths per year, which is the equivalent to one-fifth per year which also equals 0 0.20 or 20% per year. Okay, so it's up to you how you wanna present that when you build your table, if you build a table. I'm gonna go ahead and go 0.2, that's one fifth, okay? Now, I probably need another column for the fraction of the year, okay? But in this case, I'm just gonna condense it into here. So just make a note of this, 
because I only own the asset since September 1st, I'm only going to take, right, September, October, November, December, right, four twelfths of that double declining rate. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm just squeezing that fraction in there. You know, you could make another column for it. I think your book makes a separate column. And then for the full years, they put 12 over 12, 12 months over 12, which is one, right, or 100%. Um, so my depreciation expense in the first year will equal 150,000 times 0.2 times 4 twelfths or one-third, one right? Same as one-third. Nice, clean number. Wow, okay. So depreciation expense for the first year is 10,000. At the end of the first year, accumulated depreciation will be 10,000. Now you tell me, what will the ending book value be? At the end of 2017, what will the ending book value be? If you go by the, oh, let me put my definition back so you can see it. If you go by my definition, 140, yeah, 140,000, right? Because it's really this cost of 150 minus the accum accumulated depreciation. Okay. So what happens in 2018? What's the beginning book value? Should be pretty. Yeah, 140 because the ending book value from 17 is the beginning book value for 18, 2018, right? Now, in in 2018, since we have a full year, we don't need that fraction, right? We're going to take the full double declining rate, not a fraction of it, okay? So 140,000 times one fifth or 0.2, right? We all agree that 0.2 is one fifth, okay? Now it's 28,000, okay? And it's only larger because 2017 is not a full year, right? Normally this thing is gonna decline. That's why it's called double declining, okay? Now you tell me what's the accumulated depreciation at the end of 2018? Logically, what would it be? After 2018 is over, you got to remember you got 10,000 sitting in accumulated depreciation plus the additional 28,000. So it's going to be 38,000, right? And then your ending book value would be 102. And if you can't, you know the answer, but you weren't able to do the math. It's 140. No, I'm sorry. Always go back to cost, right? It's 150 cost minus, remember, book value over here, cost minus accumulated depreciation. In fact, why don't we stress that a little more? And you see that word cost? You always want to come back to cost. Right? It's always cost minus accumulated depreciation. So our ending book value will always be the 150 minus the accumulated depreciation. So 112. Okay? And then if we went to 2019, our beginning book value would be the ending book value from the prior year. And then we figure depreciation expense out the same way, one-fifth times 112, okay? So that's the depreciation expense for 2019. And then to get accumulated depreciation, you add it, okay? And then again, right, ending book value is cost, 150, minus accumulated depreciation, 89. Okay, and what you gotta do is you gotta keep your eye on this book value, okay? Because you don't want your book value to go below the salvage value of 25,000. Okay. So maybe we'll try.
And you know, once you got it, if you're doing it in Excel, you can pretty much kind of copy it. So we could take what our math there, if we put the formulas in correctly, and copy it down. Okay. And you're getting pretty close. Let's kind of just, we'll run it all the way and then go back and make the correction where we have to. Okay, so you've gone below your salvage value here. Right around here. So technically, you would only take enough depreciation expense to bring the 29000 down to 25000 Okay, so you might do a side calculation here and say 29360 minus 25000 so in this year, we would have only done 43.60.13, right? And then we would, we would have been fully depreciated, okay? See, we cannot bring it down beyond our salvage value of 25,000. So you had to just, you wouldn't take the full double declining balance, okay? Real basic that way, right? Now, there's another thing where um, in the year where straight line would be more than the double declining balance, you would switch to straight line. Okay, I don't know if your book tells you that, but in the year where our straight line method actually would be more than double declining, we would sh switch to straight line. Let's see. So we might want to do a little bit of a calculation over here and just kind of eyeball it. Uh, 2000, let's start with 2023. So I would have had 45,000 Okay, and it might come down here. But we'll add that we'll add that idea a little later. I just wanted you to get an idea of how this works, but right now I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, and we were really only trying to get these first two years. Okay, but I wanted to take you through that whole thing partially there. So to record 2017, same journal entry, right? Same structure. You could borrow these shells and just use the numbers from your tables. So 2017 was 10,000 debit depreciation expense credit accumulated depreciation and then 2018 was 28,000. Focusing on these two years. Okay. And then keep in mind, you don't want to go beyond your salvage value down here. And then we needed to clean up a little bit as far as that straight line switch over, but we'll save that for uh, another discussion. Okay. Questions on that? On any of them? You sure? <laughs> 